right. Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachah Kurash. The double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone, who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And as you can see, the title of this video is Second Ezra, the third chapter, um, which goes into a lot of history. And it pretty much gives you a uh, understanding of what the Bible is about, you know, in its um, simplest form, you know, dealing with the chosen seed of the Heavenly Father and their constant, you know, falling from grace. And, um, you know, this is the final captivity of that chosen seed, all right, going back to Adam, all right, uh, and then through, uh, of course, Seth, because Abel was slew through uh, Enoch, Noah, Shem, or Faxad, you know, uh, Eber, his father was Shalah, you know, Peleg, all right, all the way up to Abraham who had Isaac and Jacob. This chapter gives you the understanding of that, all right, so that you have, you know, pretty much there's nothing you can say about the truth of the Bible and what we're saying. And the fact that the Israelites are the chosen people of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Okay, and the remnant of that seed are going to be heirs to a particular promise that was made to Abraham, his seed, through Isaac, his seed, through Jacob. Okay, who had 12 sons. Okay, according to the book of uh, Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. As a matter of fact, we can get that. All right, just to start it off to set the standard that the true biblical Israelites are still in the planet Earth, the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, because that's the will of the Lord. And we understand and know that there was a promise made to that seed. Okay, when you get, uh, as a matter of fact, let's start in one of my favorite, Genesis, the 35th chapter, and then we'll jump to that in the book of uh, Jeremiah. Okay, this is the book of Genesis chapter 35 and 10, and God said unto him, thy name is Jacob, thy name shall no more be called Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name, Yasha Allah, Israel shall be thy name, and he called his name Yasha Allah, Israel, okay, he is a prince of the power, all right, now prior to this, this particular lineage were known as the sons of God going all the way back to Adam, okay, and through Seth, you had the sons of God, all right, those who were to uphold the righteous way, all right, at the time of Abraham, we understand and know that that lineage, okay, uh, the, the, those who were uh, being raised in Ur of the Chaldeans, okay, uh, 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 Abraham's father, Terah, he was an idol worshiper, the Heavenly Father restored the understanding to Abraham of his lineage and what we are to represent, okay? Just as we are being turned back to our legacy and understanding of who we are in these latter days in a spiritual Babylon, as well as the brothers and sisters scattered throughout these various different captivities. Our fathers were idol worshipers and mothers. Our families were idol worshipers, okay? But the bottom line is that there is a remnant of this seed who are going to be heirs to a particular promise. This is the book of Genesis 35 and 10. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall uh, not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel, Yahshua Allah. After he wrestled the angel, you know, in the, another chapter, it says, And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply a nation and a company of nations shall be of thee and kings shall come out of thy loins. Kings shall come out of thy loins. Kings shall be of thee. Okay. Out of you, Jacob. Okay. It says in the land which I gave unto Abraham and Isaac to thee will I give it and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. So there's a promise of that particular land. All right, to this particular seed that would be through Abraham, through Isaac, and through Jacob, okay? That's how this chosen seed is going to be restored to righteousness, all right? 
But this goes all the way back to Adam, as we're going to get in Second Edges, the uh, third chapter. Now, let's read this in the book of Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. Okay. And we'll read at the 35th verse. It says, Thus saith Yahweh, the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Okay? The Lord of hosts, all right, is his name. The Lord of armies, all right? If those ordinances depart from before me, meaning if the sun doesn't go out, all right, if the sun doesn't set, if the sun doesn't rise, if the moon doesn't come out, okay, if those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So when you see the sun in the sky and the moon in the sky, those are indicators that the true Biblical seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are still in the earth, right? It says, <laughs> so if those ordinances depart, okay, then that seed would cease from being a nation in the planet earth, okay? And the heathen, in particular, the biblical Edomites, the, the biblical Moabites, so-called Chinese, and all of these heathen are doing what they can to shut down the natural ordinances of the earth, Okay, even talking about they're going to create, they're creating, you know, uh, 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 alternate suns. They're blocking the sun via their chemicals. They have uh, plans to bomb the moon. They've already tried it. Elam tried that. Okay? So what are they doing that for? Because ultimately they want to cut off the seed of Israel from being a nation from before Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Let's get that in the book. Of Psalms the 83rd chapter, okay? And it'll 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 bring light as to why this chapter in second edge of the third chapter is important. Let's get Psalms 83. Psalms the 83rd chapter in the second verse, for lo thine enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thine hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Yasha Allah be no more in remembrance. Why would they want that? Because when the Lord remembers his monument, Zion or Sion, it also means parched place, but it, it means monument, okay? And the monument that the Lord is going to remember is, he, is his elect. And he's put his name on that promise that was given unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the heathen want to cut off the Israelites from being a name in the earth. But according to this, okay, let's go to Jeremiah 31 and 37. Thus said the Lord, if heaven can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for what they have done, said the Lord, meaning he's not going to have mercy on us. And the mercy's already written. But if, 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 if the devil, the heathen, are able to measure the foundations of the earth, okay? <laughs> you go to the bottom of the ocean and measure out, you know, the full, you know, calculation, scientific calculation as to how vast the creation is. If they're able to do that, which they can't do that, even these so-called astronauts, they tell you one thing they notice about the galaxies and the heavens is that it continuously spreads itself out. As the Lord said, he stretches it out as a curtain. You'll, you'll never get to the end of that. However, if they were able to, um, you know, search the full heavens and, and uh, uh, search out earth beneath, he would cast us off. If they can go to the very bottom of the ocean, they can go pet Leviathan and put him on camera. <laughs> they can't do that. Okay. And, They've tried, and they try to act as if they have everything figured out with their pseudoscience, but they're losing, okay? So the true biblical seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is in the earth in this time. And according to biblical prophecy, they will awaken in the latter days from a dead state, okay? So your wish of the name of Israel being cut off as a nation 
all right, is being is being uh, rebuked right before your eyes. Now, when you go to Second Edges, the third chapter, okay, and the uh, first verse. So understand too, with you being an Israelite, uh, a son of the power in these latter days, you're 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 here ultimately because you're the rightful heirs to the promised land, and the Lord made a promise unto his people that it would be fulfilled and we would be returned unto that land. Okay? So uh, you can, uh, uh, you know, potentially be one of those first fruits that are returned under Yahweh Shai, the 144, and, and, and ultimately the large multitude, the rest of the men, women, and children, okay, whom he's going to have mercy on. So second enters the third chapter and the first verse says, in the 13th year after the ruin, I was in Babylon and lay troubled upon my bed. And my thoughts came over, and, and my thoughts came over my heart. So here it is, our forefather Ezra. One day he's laying down in Babylon, and ultimately his 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 mind got troubled. Okay, ultimately he he uh he was stressed out. He was he, he was in deep thought as he laid on the bed, and it says, For I saw the desolation of Sion. Okay, in the wealth of them that dwelt at Babylon. All right, he saw the desolation of the temple. Okay, he, he saw what the Babylonians did. He saw the ruins of it. He saw how of a low state our people were in round about. Okay, and he saw the wealth of those that dwelt at Babylon. All right, the Assyrians. Okay, it wasn't the Cushites. The ancient Babylonians were not Cushites. They were Assyrians. Okay, now the 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 Cushites, the so-called Ethiopians, do go back to Nimrod. They at one point controlled uh, uh, Babel, you know, Assyria, Nineveh. Okay, uh, Nimrod and his you know cohorts as they went and conquered. Okay, but then you have eventually the uh, the Neo Babylonian Empire, which ultimately was ran by the Assyrians. Okay, now it says here. It says here, let's see, the beginning, so um, he saw the desolation of Sion, the temple was destroyed, the people were destroyed, and the wealth of them that dwelt at Babylon, and we see the same thing here as we're looking at our people in this lower state. You see, they're, 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 uh, the, the heathen are prospering, they have businesses, they're able to give out loans. Okay, but our, here it is, our people are in this lower state, okay, especially the Rothschilds, those, those who you don't see, okay, here it is, the, the, the wealth they have, as uh, your boy Chris Rock said, if you knew the amount of wealth these people were playing with, you'd lose your mind, okay, so we see the desolation of our people, it says, and my spirit was sore moved, so that I began to speak words full of fear, to the to the most high and said so he started to speak to the most high but he either scribed or had scribed what his conversation all right <laughs> with the most high all right the revelation he received from angels all right was it says O lord who bears rule thou spakest at the beginning when thou didst plant the earth and that thy and that thyself alone commandest the people, all right? And we, we can read the creation story in the book of Genesis, all right? It says in the beginning, all right, the Allahayim, that word God is Allahayim, which means powers, okay? The most high used, all right, starting with his only begotten son, the first spirit created, all right, Yahweh Shah and the Holy Host, all right, in the beginning, all right, to create everything you know, that word beginning even means foundations, all right, uh, uh, rulers, basically a government, okay, his, his first order was given unto his son and the holy angels, the first fruit spirits, to create everything you see before you, through the blueprint of the most high, the Allahayim created the heaven and the earth, and that was through 1,000 year periods, when you, when you read about the days, all right, it says on the first day, the second day, that wasn't literally one day, According to uh, Second Peter's one day, all right, uh, uh, to the Lord is a thousand years to us. So those were a thousand year periods where 
everything you uh, uh, know and see, smell, air, you know, water, you know, the, the human beings, all of these things were in creation, all right, in a period of 7,000 years, well, 6,000 years, and then the 7,000 year of, um, you know, rest. Now, when you keep going, so the earth was created for a purpose, okay, and there was a, there was a chosen nation starting with Adam that was to run this creation called earth in a particular way. You see, that was what the earth was created for. The heathen were just created to, to serve the chosen people and to be in line and in order under this chosen people. Okay? So, O Lord that bears rule, thou spakest at the beginning when thou didst plant the earth. His word, okay, his order went forth and all of everything you see was created. Okay? Everything. All right? It says, Thou didst plant the earth, and that thyself alone commandest the people. Okay? And he gave commandment. All right? The first man to receive that order on the planet earth was Adam. This is where our legacy starts. Now, Adam wasn't the first man on the planet earth, he was the first to receive instruction on how this vessel known as planet Earth was to be operated and ran, okay? And that's the law, statutes, and commandments. You have to understand your culture, okay, what the Lord gave you, okay, in the form of a culture, yeah, we received it as laws on stone at the time of Moses, but it go, it's deeper than that. It goes back to a way that we are supposed to operate and be and dominate on the planet Earth that leads to life, peace, and prosperity all right, for the chosen people, but even the heathen nations, when they follow that way, they prosper, they win, okay, but they'll never be on the level of the chosen people, but the importance of the chosen people ruling the sons of God is that everything is placed in order, therefore the earth benefits, animals benefits, all species benefit from the rightful order being placed upon the planet earth, okay, it says, and gave us a body unto Adam, okay, without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hands, okay, it said he made Adam from the dust of the earth, all right, and Adam, as we know, the chosen people are made in a very, very uh, particular way, the heavenly father, the way he, he made all nations, but the way he made Israel, the made, way he made this chosen all right, people is, 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 is above all nations, man, okay? And this is why we operate even in our lowest state on a higher vibration than the heathen. That's why you jump higher. That's why the, you taste food uh, uh, at a different, you see color different. You hear sounds and vibrations different. You're able to, you know, the, uh, operate, you know, on a plane, but we, we're, we're in a fallen state. Okay, and that's all attributed to the spirit, the way that the Heavenly Father created, all right, us is to be a special people above all nations on the planet Earth. How could you run away from that legacy, man? Embrace it. Don't run from it. Okay, don't deny it. Try it. All right, it says, and gave us a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hands, and did us breathe unto him the breath of life. And he was made living before thee. So Adam was already alive. Okay? Remember, when you get into Genesis, in the fifth day, men were created. All, you know, creatures were created. Okay? They, they, they were being fruitful and multiplying. In the sixth day, they were, they were given order. And this is what we read. So there was a point where Adam was without the understanding. Okay? Just as there was a point where Abraham was without the understanding. There was a point where us... We were without the understanding. However, it was through divine intervention, the Holy Spirit, that the Most High dealt with us. And he dealt directly with Adam as the son of the Most High. He's the first to receive instruction on the planet Earth. Okay? And when you get the book, the book of Luke, the, uh, the third chapter, okay? Luke, the third chapter. And I'll just get the last verse, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, the son of God, the sons of God go through Seth. 
all right, going back to who? Adam, okay, which was the uh, uh, son of Adam, which was the son of God. So Adam was the son of God. He's the first son of God, all right, to, to, to come on the earth in flesh and operate in this flesh and receive the wisdom. You see that? There were other nations round about. Adam had a dad. Adam had, Adam had a mom. And the proof of that is when you read in Genesis, the, uh, thir the third chapter, Adam himself said, man shall cleave. As a matter of fact, let's get that. And I have a lesson on that. You know, other brothers and bishops and apostles as well have lessons on that. But Adam himself said this. Okay. This is Genesis. Let's see here. Cleave. Hold on, let me find it here. <clears throat> this is uh, Genesis 2, 2 and 24. All right. Genesis 2 and 23. And Adam said... This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And that represents agreement and covenant. All right, union. Okay, even when David became king, all Israel said, we are thy bone and we are thy flesh. All right, when uh, uh, Laban, which was Jacob's uncle, saw him, he, he said, you are my flesh and my bone. That represents union, family, agreement, bonds. So Adam and Eve, you know, they, they came together. And they were to create a, a, a union and bond, and through that union was to come the sons of God, to where a, a righteous generation of men and women would dominate the planet Earth, starting with the men, okay, and be the upstanding ones that the rest of the heathen were to follow. So it says that she should be called woman because she was take, taken out of man and uh, also, Eve was a, a, of his family line, of that family line that he had. The woman that was given unto him was taken from that particular family line and given to him as a wife, a help me. Family, order, structure. All right. The, 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 uh, uh, the, the man is the head. All right. Even in our alphabet. All right. Ah. Or they say Allah. <laughs> all right. The, the, the head, the strength of the house is the man. Okay. Now, and then Ba is the house. Okay, the Ba is the house, man. And in the house, you have what? A wife, a child. Okay, and order is set up. Now, it says, verse twenty-four. Therefore, shall man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So Adam himself said that. That man is going to leave his mother and his father in Cleveland to his wife. How did he know that concept if he if he was just he just appeared in the planet Earth? No, we're reading it here. He was without soul, but then what did the Lord do? All right, the Lord did his breathe unto him the breath of life, and he was made living before thee. Okay, he was made living. He was without the understanding. <laughs> he was like the first Gentile, right? <laughs> he was he was in a uh, you know a dead state. And eventually the Lord quickened him. The Lord gave him the understanding. Okay? It says the first the first Adam was made a living soul. Okay? But the last Adam is going to be made a quickening spirit. The Lord is going to program him to do right. Okay? It's not going to uh, uh, fall from that order. It's going to be, he's going to be, it's, it's going to be in him. And we are right under him as the sons of God in that order, okay? So it says, and gave us a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hands, and didst breathe unto him the breath of life. And he was made living before thee. So he became living, just like in uh, Revelation, the 11th chapter, after three days and a half, the spirit of life entered into us after we were in that dead state. Now being in a dead state is just without the understanding. We were alive, breathing, but we were living once we got this understanding. So it says, and thou lettest him forth into paradise, which thy right hand had planted before ever the, first, the, the earth ever came forward. All right. And now ultimately Adam was given the order. And through that order, 
everything was budding. The the the, the everything around him was, was fruitful, and 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 it started at Jerusalem. That's the Garden of Eden. Okay, the chosen land. All right, that region, you know, that was promised unto Abraham. That's the Garden of Eden. Okay, and we're going to return unto that land under the second Adam, Hamashiach Yahushai. Now it says. And lettest them to, to paradise, which thy right hand had planted before the, the earth ever came forth. And the earth was planted, okay? But the plan for the chosen seed was also already planned before the earth even came forward, okay? That's why the scriptures say that we were chosen. Let's get that. Uh, Ephesians, the, uh, four, the first chapter. Okay, Ephesians, the first chapter. In the first verse, I start at three. Blessed is God the Father and our Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach who has blessed us with all spiritual uh, blessings in heavenly places in Hamashiach, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, and have predestinated us, all right, predestinated us unto the adoption of children. By Yahweh Hamashiach to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Okay. One second. <clears throat> anyway. Anyway. It says, uh, and ledest him into paradise, which thy right hand had planted before ever the earth came forward. Okay. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way, which he transgressed. And immediately thou appointest death in him and in his generations of who came uh, uh, nations. Okay. Tribes, people, and kindreds out of number. All right. And that was promised unto Abraham eventually. His seed would be as the sand of the seed. The same was to Isaac. The same was unto Jacob. Okay? And since Adam slip up through Eve's sin, he sinned, and eventually that immortality, okay, the, the, the how the Lord intended for us to live was taken away. Okay? Adam was given the commandments first. Okay? The commandments we received on stone at the time of Moses, okay, but before time were oral, it was just a way that we were to walk in. What separated us from that way? This flesh. Okay? And as it says in the book of 2nd Edges, the 45th chapter, or 2nd Edges, the 7th chapter, and around the... Let's get that real quick. Let's see here. 40... Yep, 48. O thou Adam, 2nd Edges 7 and 48. O thou Adam, what hast thou done? For though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, but we all that come of thee through Seth, the fallen ones. Thou art not fallen alone, but we that come of thee have fallen. And look how far we have fell unto this time, that chosen seed. Okay? But we've been having the same issue since then, rebelling against the way, and that's what Eve represented, playing the harlot, okay, following after the serpent. She was given an order. We as the nation of Israel, that she that was given an order. But we were what? Disobedient to our husband. Eve was given an order through Adam. What did the serpent uh, say? Well, he came to her with an alternative salvation, an alternative role boasting itself above the order and role she was given. And what did that lead to? The household being in shambles. Because the woman is a very important vessel in a household, in a nation. Okay? The man receives the order from the Most High, Adam, the breath of life, and he gives him a woman. Adam gave that woman an instruction and in order under the Most High through that breath, and it led to what? The earth in paradise being set up on the planet earth. But that wasn't enough for Eve. Eve wanted to what? 
live under the serpent salvation to where she can uh, 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 boast herself over that role and call that role slavery and say, I don't have to be in no damn house teaching no children, forwarding your legacy, nigga. I could go and put on these two little shoes, these pumps and this female suit and run a whole goddamn corporation and be on top of the world. I don't need no damn family. I don't want no children. Well, that's what we, the nation of Israel, did to the most high in a sense. That's the attitude we had. Okay? Now, Adam and Eve were actually two people. All right? And it, but it represents also that the seed, all right, the, 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 that chosen seed in their rebellion and, 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 and constantly following after these other philosophies, man. And that has been a problem with us going all the way back to Adam, Eve, and their sons that would to, to uphold the ways of righteousness. Okay? That's how you know. The priesthood was passed through that lineage. Abel what? Had a better sacrifice than Cain. Okay? They, they, they called on the name of the Lord. Noah knew about the sacrifice, the priesthood. Everything of that chosen lineage was a way and a standard we were supposed to upkeep. All right? And this is what we're coming back to now. It says, And unto him, speaking to Adam, thou gave us a commandment to love thy way, which he transgressed. He transgressed the laws. And immediately thou appointest death in him and in his generations, of whom came nations, tribes, people, kindreds, out of number. And every people walked after their own will and did wonderful things and despised thy commandments. Okay, and in the process of time thou brought us the flood on those that dwelt in the world and destroyest them. And in the top in the process of time, every people walked after their own will. Okay, that's the sons of God, the sons of Adam. When you get Genesis the sixth chapter, you read about the sons of God, land with the daughters of men. All right, which that's surrounded with much mythology and madness within this world. But the true understanding on Genesis, the sixth chapter, is it's the sons of God, the fallen ones, fallen from their grace and glory, doing, doing ungodly things, bound to idols, being mingled in with the heathen, and doing what? Learning their works. Okay, when you read about that in the, in the Bible, it says men were eating. As a matter of fact, let's get that. Okay, in the uh, this is Matthew twenty four and and thirty eight. As for in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered into the ark. So this is speaking of men. This is not no particular seed that fell from heaven, some angels that fell from heaven the seed of the serpent, and came down having sex with women. No, man, this is the sons of God through Seth who, who, who ultimately were mingled in with the different nations round about, mingling in with Cain's family line and doing what? Learning their ways, just as we fell in this time. That Those were the original fallen ones. The word giant, Napoleon, means what? To fall. Now, the scriptures say this in the book of Psalms, the 82nd, the 82nd chapter. Okay, so this chapter is giving us our history, man. And that's very important to know. Okay? Psalms 82. And 6, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. And here it is, the chosen people of the Heavenly Father are living as servants on the planet Earth. In a creation that we created under Yahweh Shai, we're in captivity. <laughs> that's, that's, that's heavy. But we, we, we are gods, we are powers, okay? But we came into the earth in this flesh and what? We died like men. Death entered into to, to the fold. The scriptures say in Wisdom of Solomon... Real quick. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 2 and 23. For God created man to be immortal. 
and made him to be the image of his own eternity. Speaking of the chosen man from Adam through Seth, the sons of the power, the sons of God. Okay. In the image of his own eternity, nevertheless, through the through envy of the devil came death into the world. And they that do hold of his side do find it. And we boy did we find death. Okay. We went after those different idols and gods, and they always led to decay in the in the household, which led to decay within the nation, which led to what? Ungodliness, no morals, no uh, uh, standards. And look, but see, we hope to be of that spirit of Abraham who are going to turn from those idols, okay? Those Gentiles at the time that Paul was on the scene, you know, the, the, the main, the halted at the time of Yahawashai ultimately uh, uh, through, believing through faith, turning from these wicked ways, man. We hope to be of that lineage in the midst of a disobedient and gainsaying people, the Israelites. They don't stop. They're not going to stop. So the Lord always left a remnant or, or a man or, or two men or whatever that, 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 that did what was right so that righteousness can continue in the planet Earth, man. And this is what we're here for. Now, going back to 2nd Edges, the third chapter, it says, verse 8, And every people walked after their own will and did wonderful things before thee and despised the commandments. And that's what Genesis, the sixth chapter, is talking about, man. Okay, when you go to Genesis, the sixth chapter, you know, you even have this guy, uh, Elder Rakab, G-O-C-C, -C, teaching that, there were particular demons that survived the flood. They held on to the bottom of the boat. And these were the seed of the serpent. And when, when, when the flood, you know, went away, they came from under the boat or wherever they hid. All right. From the pits of hell and they came onto the earth and had sex with women. Nah, man. Genesis, the sixth chapter. Okay. In the fourth verse, there were giants in the earth in those days. This is Moses writing to us what the Heavenly Father has given him on the uh, the mount, okay? Uh, uh, in the form of the Torah, Moses was given the first five books. So he said there were giants on the earth in those days. When you go to the Hebrew word giants, it's the same as this Hebrew word in Psalms, the 82nd chapter, in the seventh verse, ye shall fall like the princes. What is that word? Fall like the princes. Ye are gods, but ye shall fall. That word is Nepal, to fall. All right? Now, let's go to the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter. Okay, it says to fall, to fail, to fall away. Okay, to desert. The, that chosen lineage deserted the ways of righteousness. Genesis, the sixth chapter, to this word giants. There were giants in the earth in those days. What is that word? Nepalium. All right, N Nepal, Napayal, okay? Now it says giants, but when you go to the root word, it's Nepal, to fall, the fallen ones. There were fallen ones in the earth in those days. Moses is telling you our people were going to hell off. <laughs> it was falling away at this time. Jake fell away from the ways of righteousness, Okay? There were giants, so let's read it in its proper form. There were fallen ones in the earth in those days, and also the sons of God, the chosen lineage, just came into the daughters of men, started to deal and make covenants with the other nations, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Okay, so they started to have children by these women, but the children that came out of these women were of that same lineage, okay? They were sons of God as well. But it was everything was being done out of order. Just like at the time of Nehemiah, the Israelites were in transgression following after the heathen. They weren't even raising their children, children in the Hebrew. Okay? Solomon did that. He made marriages with these different heathen and allowed their gods and their, their vibrations to be pushed. No. You're supposed to do it like David. No. You serve my God now. You work for my enterprise you only call on the name of my God. Don't, everything your mother and father taught you, speaking to the concubines that you capture of the heathen, no, you, you put that off. You're now going to follow our way. 
Okay, you're not supposed to make no damn marriages and covenant agreements with heathen. They they fall under the order of a concubine. Marriage is between you and the women of your nation. Okay, a, a, a true ceremonial marriage where, where it's a co a, a full blown covenant being made. The joining of houses. You don't join the houses with with heathen. Okay, but our people started to do that even back then. At the time. You know, after Adam and his, son, you know, his sons, okay, uh, 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 was, was spread forth, sons and daughters spread forth in the earth. Jake just went off. The same damn thing we see now. Okay? <laughs> it says, in the Most High saw, Genesis 6 and 5, that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. <laughs> And God saw that the wickedness of man was great. These are speaking of men and women on the earth, eating, drinking, being married, being freaky, the, the sons of God going off. Okay? It says, And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth. And it says, um, And the Lord said, I will destroy man who I have created on the earth, you know, and, and eventually the flood came. There's a part where he says he is but flesh. Let's get this real quick and then we'll move on to second edges. Second, uh, this is Genesis uh, chapter six and three. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, but that he is also flesh. So it's showing you this is speaking of men. He is also flesh because Israel, the chosen seed, started to fall away because of the desires of this flesh. This is why we need those new bodies. It's the beauty of what Yahweh Shah did. Now we have access to finally getting that. Okay? Because we're not going to rule the earth in these decrepit bodies with a backache. No. They don't work like that. We're going to get new bodies. Okay? We're not going to have to deal with doubt in the flesh. So it says... Verse 9, and then again, in the process of time, thou brought us the flood upon the earth on those that dwelt in the world and destroyed us them. Okay, and that happened in Genesis, the sixth chapter on to around the ninth, the flood, you know, Noah, okay, who was a son of God, one of those sons of God, but he did right. And it was through him that everything was restored through a son named Shem. Okay. That's the chosen lineage, the story of the Bible, man. Okay, it says, Nevertheless, one of them thou leftest, namely Noah, with his household of whom came all righteous men. Okay, through Shem. Okay, the chosen of Noah's uh, sons was Shem. How do we know that? Genesis, the ninth chapter said, Blessed be Yahweh of Shem. Shem means name, meaning the legacy of, Okay, the reputation, the fame, and everything, starting with the name of the Most High, the name of His Son, will be continued in the earth through this lineage. Okay, it says, And it happened that when the, that they dwelt upon the earth, all right, began to multiply and had gotten them many children and were a great people, they began to be more ungodly than, than the first. Okay? And we can read about that when you get Genesis, the 11th chapter, okay, after the Tower of Babel. Let's get that. Okay. Genesis, the 11th chapter. And after the flood, you know, after the, the Tower of Babel is confounded, Salakia, after the Tower of Babel is confounded, it goes immediately into the generations of Shem. Because... There was a righteous seed at the time of the Tower of Babel too. Okay, that 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 stayed to stuck to the script. But you know there was a lot of the chosen seed at that time helping to build the Tower of Babel. Okay, so everything that we're doing can be tied to what our forefathers once did on some level at some point. We're witnessing the Tower of Babel with a family line of Shem in order for the Hebrew language not to be confounded, would have had to be doing what was right. Which is why on down in that line, there was a son named Eber, which means Hebrew. 
because through this lineage, the language, the legacy, and everything from the past will be continued. Okay? So the family line of Shem, these are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old, and he begot Arphaxad two years after the flood. And as it keeps going, okay, it goes all the way down to Terah, who was Abraham's father. Okay? And what do we know about Terah? Let's get Joshua 24. What do we know about Terah, Abraham's father? Abraham comes from that lineage of Shem through our facts had. All right? Who was Shem's father? Noah. All right? All the way back to Enoch. All the way up to Adam through Seth. This is what the Bible was talking about, man. Okay? So what, what can we find out about the, the, the chosen lineage? What were they doing at this time? At the, uh, at the time Terah was on the scene. This is... uh. Genesis, Joshua 24 and 2. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus said the Lord God, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah, the father of Abraham, the father of Nahor, and they served other gods. They served other gods. Okay? At the Terah, Abraham's father was an idol worshiper. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed. So Abraham was restored to the legacy, but he grew up. He didn't know. He was in the physical Babylon doing all manner. He didn't, you know, he didn't know. But the heavenly father had mercy on him. He wasn't even circumcised, showing you he wasn't practicing the, 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 the way of, of his fathers going all the way back to Adam through through Noah, through Shem, through Seth, of course. Okay? Now, going back here. So, Jake started doing wickedness all over again. Okay? And we know that through the simple fact that Abraham's father was serving other gods. What do you think his father was doing? What do you think the rest of the sons of God were doing? Because it's focusing in on particular men, you know, uh, Terah, Abraham, but there were other sons of God and daughters as well. Okay? But it's focusing in on particular key men, all right, that are important amongst that chosen uh, lineage. So it says, and it happened, verse 12, Second Edges 3 and 12, and it happened that when they that dwelt upon the earth began to multiply and had gotten them many children and great people. They began again to be, be more ungodly than the first. It's the sons of God. Now, when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose a man from among them whose name was Abraham. See, that is still speaking of that chosen lineage. But amongst that lineage, the Lord chose Abraham, okay, who was in an uncircumcised state. But he received what? The, the, the Holy Spirit. The Lord had him restored to his legacy, his order. <laughs> okay? This is before the laws were written on stone, but the scriptures say Abraham kept the laws once he woke up. But his righteousness wasn't based upon keeping the laws. His righteousness was based upon his faith and separating from all of that and going towards the promised land. He separated from his father's house. That was a big thing back then. He separated from the idols. He, he, he went his way. And that's what we're doing in the spirit. Okay? Our families ain't down with what we're doing. Okay? For the most part. Second Edges 3. Okay? And now it says in 13 again. Now when they lived so wickedly before thee, thou didst choose a man from amongst them whose name was Abraham. Him thou lovest, and only him thou showedest thy will. You see that? Just as he showed Adam his will, he showed Abraham his will. Okay? It says, And made an everlasting covenant with him, promising him that thou would never forsake his seed. His seed. Showing you that it's only speaking of his seed that won't be forsaken. And how do we uh, see who that seed is? We would then go to Isaac because he had other children. And even in Genesis, the 17th chapter, real quick, 
One of the most notable ones, Ishmael. Okay? So this is the biblical, this is the Bible story. It's giving you the, the second Ezra uh, 3 is breaking it down. He's going, he's going through it. Okay? Second Ezra chapter 7. <laughs> Genesis chapter 17. Let's see here. Because Abraham wanted to give the blessing to, to Ishmael. All right. I'll start at uh, 19. I'll just get to the point. I'll start at 18. And Abraham said unto the Most High, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. Ultimately, put the blessing on him. Okay? The blessing of the chosen. All right? Of how that particular lineage will be restored back to their righteousness. The, the lineage that Yahweh Shai would eventually come from. Okay? This is about that lineage, man. Okay? And God says, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him, which would be through Jacob, as we'll show you. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget. I will make him a great nation, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee this set time in the next year. Okay? So so the covenant, all right, of the, 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 the chosen lineage, the covenant of the goodwill the, of, of the everything, man, with the most high is through Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob. Ishmael got a blessing, but the blessing of the chosen, the priesthood and everything like that would not be given to any other nation but the Israelites, okay? Second Ezra is the third chapter, okay? In the 15th verse, and made us an everlasting covenant with him, promising that thou would never forsake his seed. And unto him thou gavest Isaac, and unto Isaac thou gavest Jacob and Esau. As for Jacob, didst thou choose him to thee and put by Esau, all right? Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. Okay, the chosen of the two was, was Jacob. Esau got a blessing though, right? And you, you, you're you living out your blessing. And the most high is fair, man. Everybody got their rulership, but then we'll hear, we, we come talking about how we're going to rule. You know, people lose their mind. <sighs> Can't wait to taste real water. It says... As for Jacob, thou didst choose him to thee and put by Esau. Esau, thy stiff arm. Okay? He, 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 here, here's this for you. But for him, for Jacob, it says, And so Jacob became, became a great multitude, as was promised unto Abraham and Isaac. And it came to pass that when thou lettest this seed, still following this particular seed, See, the, the, we're, we're connected literally all the way back to Adam through through Seth, okay, through eventually Noah, through Shem, through our Faxad, okay, uh, uh, Eber, Peleg, Terah, Abraham, okay, who everything was restored to, man, okay? That's how the Gentiles are tied unto Abraham because it's through faith in an uncircumcised state when you didn't know the law, the Heavenly Father had put his spirit upon you, man, and you returned. You're still an Israelite, as Adam was still one of the sons of God. He just had to be restored unto that order, as we have been restored. That's how the Gentiles and Abraham are connected. But it's still through Isaac and Jacob. You can't take that away. We're reading it right here. Okay? It says... And it goes all the way up to Egypt. We know you had the history with jo uh, Joseph, Egypt, uh, or, and how we ended up, okay, in Egypt, the famine, okay? So it's jumping to that history, but it's still following that seed. But you see how it goes all the way back to Adam, through Noah, 
If you see how uh, he's giving you the history, but you got to put all of the pieces together. And this is what the prophets are here for, to make sense of this book. The legacy you are tied to started in the heavens. You came on earth, starting with Adam, through who all nations come of Adam. But that chosen lineage is what the Bible is focusing on. This is our history and how we've always fell from our grace. Okay? From our the, 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 the order the Lord gave us and how that seed is going to be restored one day. Okay? Back to their original heavenly estate and finally rule this earth so that it can be the paradise the Lord planned it to be. That's what Eden means, paradise. Don't you want to be, don't you want to see paradise? Well, that's only going to come through the second Adam being restored. <laughs> and, and the sons of God restored unto him. Okay? Ruling this thing in, in righteousness. That's going to be the new government. Okay? The throne of David after this place is destroyed. Okay? It says, let me just keep going and get through this. It says, and it came to pass that when thou us his seed out of Egypt, thou broughtest them up to Mount Sinai, and the bowing of the heavens did as he set fast the earth, movest the whole world, and madest the depths to tremble, and thou, trembled, uh, thou troublest the men of that age. Okay, and that, that goes back to Exodus, the 19th chapter. Okay, we ain't got to read it. When the Lord literally the, sent the chariot over Mount Sinai, okay, and the, the earth trembled at that time, you know, and eventually we got the laws, made a covenant, the Lord made a covenant with us. Let's see here. You can read, uh, yep, uh, Exodus 19 and... This is when he's getting ready to make a covenant with us. You, yep, you can read up verse 16. And it came to pass on the third day and that morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud and all the people that were in the camp trembled. So that's, he's just giving you that history as he's, this is what he's talking about. So if you wanted the, the precept. It says in verse 20, and thou and yet tookest thou not away. Okay, wait a minute. Yep, verse 19, second address 3 and 19. And thy glory went through four gates of fire, and the earthquake, and of the wind, and of the cold, that thou mightest give thy law unto the seed of Jacob, and diligence unto the generation of Israel. So that order that Adam was given, that breath of life, that 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 standard, that way that we're to be, we got it on stone at the time of Moses. Okay, but it's still that chosen lineage. Okay, it says, And yet tookest thou not away from them that wicked heart, that wicked mind, that the law might bring forth fruit in them. Because of this flesh, we constantly rebel, so we fell again. Broke this covenant. Okay, it says, For the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed and was overcome, and so be all they that are born of him. Speaking of that chosen lineage. As we read in 2nd Edges, the 7th chapter, in the 48th verse, O Adam, what hast thou done? <laughs> Think about it. Our falls, or the greatest fall, came through Adam and through Solomon. Since, since Adam's fall, we, we have to deal with, you know, death, aging, you know, the captivity, slavery, working for, for our bread, you know. Through Solomon, we have no unity. The kingdom was rent. We've been through various different captivities leading all the way up to this one. <laughs> you see? So, as it says in the book of Romans, the, the fifth chapter, let's get that. Romans, the fifth chapter. Got a new Bible. If you're willing to uh, pay for it, this is a good Bible. Uh, Cambridge, the, the Holy Bible, King James Version with the Apocrypha from Cambridge. This is, they got precepts in it. It's bad. It's a, it's a good, 
you know, but you you know, it's not too high. It's about a, it runs about a hundred and twenty bucks. But if you're willing to invest in that, this is a good book, you know, and it's you know, parts in the back where you can put your notes. You know, I'm gonna have the brothers hook me up. Um but um going back to uh Second Edges the third chapter, okay. It says, verse 21, for the first Adam bearing, oh, Romans the fifth chapter, that's what I was going to be. Romans the fifth chapter, and let's get it. 16, it says, it says, and not, Romans 5 and 16, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, starting with Adam, but the free gift of many is of many offenses unto justification, under Yahweh Shah. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, all right, how much more they which receive abundance of grace of the righteousness shall reign by the life of one, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Okay? Verse 19, for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So Adam's disobedience led to all in his hell, and he fixed it under Yahweh Shai through obedience to bring that chosen seed back to the legacy they had in the heavens. But to finally have those heavenly bodies and rule on earth, man, that's a gift above Anything we can receive in this world. That's what Yahweh Shai did for us with his life. Okay? And he's an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. He was the redeemer of his people to redeem that seed back to the glory. That's why when he died, before he died, he said, Look, I did what you told me to do. Lord, return me to the glory I had with you before the foundation of the earth. That that, that when we were in complete obedience in our heavenly bodies. And we under him try, are trying to get back to that heavenly estate. But it's been through disobedience and flesh that the cor corruption has entered in. And the whole creation has suffered from the chosen line not being in order. But oh, will they benefit one day, all right? It says, second Edges, the third chapter, it says, see here, second Edges, the third chapter, in the 21st again, for the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed and was overcome, and so be all that are born of him through Seth, who was also made in his image. Thus infirmity was made permanent, and the law also in the heart of the people with the manipulity of the root, so that the, the, the good departed away and that evil still abode. So through this flesh, and, and through the disobedience to the rules and regulations of those laws, okay, death was able to continue to perpetuate amongst this chosen lineage, man. We needed a, a, a way back, and that only way back was through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, man. Okay, because this flesh condemns us. Okay, it, it's it's it's, <laughs> and then the way that the world is set up, we're, we're, there's traps. To where you're sinning against that first covenant in, 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 in ways you don't even know. Esau made it a point to set the world up so that we went off to keep us separated from our power. So we need, okay, while we're in this uncircumcised state, we need a way back contrary to that first covenant. And that's what Yahweh Shah has given us in the form of grace. Okay? Now, we don't disobey the law while we're under this grace period, all right? But we're justified by faith. Faith is going to lead to you keeping the laws automatically. That's a part of just being of that lineage and, 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 and obedience. To the best of your ability, you're going to try to keep the laws, okay? That's, you know, that, that any Israelite should be striving to the best of their ability, okay? Within reason, because we're in Babylon the Great. You can't, be, you can't go crazy with the law. Okay, you have to operate in faith. 
That's what the Heavenly Father is more, uh, uh, he, he loves that, to see that you believe and that you're leaning 100% upon him and you're willing to, 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 like Abraham, separate and leave everything behind and go and chase that promised land. And we're doing that in the spirit. All right? But that blessing was given unto Abraham before the law was even written on stone. Okay? And that blessing is for us, chosen before the foundation of the earth. So back to 2 Edges 3 and 21. So the times passed away, and the years were brought to the an end. Then thou didst raise up a servant called David. So eventually at the time of David, the Lord establishes our, our king. Okay? Our king David was set up, who had a son named Solomon, who established the throne of David in the planet Earth. We experienced the blessings. All right? And David was of the royal lineage of Perez through, all right, through his father Judah, okay? So this story, this whole, the whole Bible is dealing with this particular chosen lineage, man, all the way through, <laughs> all right? Whom the, the David, who thou commandest to build a city unto thy name and to offer incense and oblations unto thee therein, all right, in Jerusalem. He, he, he ruled about seven years or 33 years in Hebron or seven years in Hebron and 33 years in uh, 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 Jerusalem. Let me make sure I got that right. How many years did David rule in Hebron? Because he was crowned king first in Hebron. Let me just make sure. All right, I think I believe it was seven years in Hebron, 33 years in Jerusalem, 40 years or close to 40 years overall. Yep, he reigned seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. All right, just don't want to give out the wrong information. All right, second Edges chapter three and uh. Twenty-five. All right, it's twenty-four again. Who thou callest his name David, whom thou commandest to build a city unto thy name, and to offer incense and oblations unto thee therein. And David did. They set up the priesthood. You know, he got the ark of the covenant. When this was done many years, then they inhabited the city. Then they that inhabited the city forsook thee. And in all things, even as Adam in all his generations had done, for they also had a wicked heart. All right. Starting with Solomon. All right. The, the, we started to wane away after that 40 years where the throne of David was established, man. And the, the kings of Judah, for the most part, did wicked. I believe there were 19 kings. One was actually a woman, Athalia, you know, uh, um, a demon, her mother was Jezebel and uh, her father was Ahab, or Ahab, all right? But the, the kings of Israel, the northern kingdom, none of them did right. So Jake was just going off and basically what it's saying is that which is then is now, okay? It says, <laughs> it says in, in all things did even as Adam and all his generations had done, for they also had a wicked heart, that same rebellion had fallen away. <laughs> so thou gavest the, thy city over into the hands of thine enemies, okay, after their deeds any better than at, uh, are their deeds then any better that inhabit, inhabit Babylon? For they should have therefore, let me start over, Sulaki. Start at 27, 2nd Edges 3 and 27. And so thou gavest thy city over into the hands of thine enemies. Okay, and that's what happened after Solomon's fall. All right. 
these different heathens, the, the, you know, eventually the Assyrians, the Babylonians. Okay, it says, are their deeds then any better that inhabit Babylon, that they should therefore have dominion over Zion? So basically it's like, are, are the Edomites like, yeah, we wicked, Lord. Yeah, we go, we went off and damn, we, I'm, you know, yeah, we, we've been messing up. But look at the Edomites. Look at the Babylonians, he's saying. Are they any better than us? Look at what they got going on. So why don't you just, just, just you know, set us up? It says, why they get to rule over us if we thy chosen seed? For when I came thither and had seen impieties without number, then my soul saw many evildoers in this 30th year so that my heart failed me. So when he went, you know, over to, you know, uh, uh, Babylon, over to Jerusalem to see what Babylon had done and what, what was going on in the city. He saw impieties, which is what? Unholy things. So let's look up the word impiety. I believe that's what it means. All right. And we, we love to look up the, the meaning of words. Okay. You, you give your, so you do yourself a good service when you learn the meaning of words. It says impious, undopefulness, perceived lack of respect of something sacred. So that's what Ezra saw, and that's what we see amongst our people, man. It says, where do I keep going back there? It says, and his heart troubled him because of all of the evildoers amongst our people. It says, For I have seen how thou suffers them sinning. And has spared wicked doers, and has destroyed thy people, and has preserved thy enemies, and not and have not signified. You got these heathen ruling over us, but it was already written within the story that we were going to have to go through this. But there were particular acts, mainly of Adam and of Solomon, that justifies the whole thing, the whole fall. <laughs> it's all predicated upon that spirit, which when he came as Yahweh Shai, he got it right. He was obedient as the son. And Solomon was also the son of the Most High. Uh, Nathan told David, the, the, the child that's going to come out of your womb, he's going to be the son of the Most High. The Most High said, I will be his father and he will be my son. And if he rebels and goes off, I'm going to beat him with many stripes. Solomon wasn't beaten with many stripes. We know who was, though. Okay? Um... See here, Second Edges chapter three, and let's see here, verse thirty-one. I do not remember how this way may be left. Are they then of Babylon better than they of Zion? Why you bless? Why are they blessed? Well, because according to the curse, when you read the curse. When we go off, our enemies will be exalted over us. We would be the tail and they would be the head. But Ezra's just going through emotions. He's struggling with, you know, you're like, damn. And we have those same thoughts. Like, damn, where you go take that the so-called Chinese man? <laughs> you know, he's walking around laughing. Ain't nothing funny. But he rules over you. He's looked at as more of, of, of a, a, a good person or a better thing than you. And look at him. It says, <laughs> or is there any other people that know it thee besides Israel? Or what generation have so believed thy covenants as Jacob? We're the, we're the ones calling for the covenants you know, of righteousness to be set up. No, these heathen ain't doing that. Yet they rule over us. A damn godless individual has dominion over the quality of your meat and food and what makes it into your stores and areas where you live at. So what do you think he's going to make sure it's off, man? We, we, we're in a low estate, but actual weirdo heathen who practice all kind of witchcraft and sorcery are, are, are in a high estate. But we have to go into the Holy Scriptures and prophecy to be comforted as to why, okay? It says... And yet their reward appears not. All right? Their labor have no fruit, for I have gone here and there through the heathen, and I see that they flow in wealth and think not upon thy commandments. Elon Musk, 
Klaus Schwab, Yoel, uh, Yoel, whatever that dude's name is, okay, uh, 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 Joe Biden, the Rothschild, they don't believe in the Most High, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They do so serve a God, but that God is Satan. <laughs> they do the bidding of Satan on the planet Earth. Evil had to be played out on the Earth. There's a seed chosen to to to, to push those acts out, and that's the biblical Edomites who were at the end of their world. They're the modern day Babylonians. We're in the daughter of Babylon. It says, "Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance." And there's also that dwell in the world, and so shall thy name be found nowhere but in Israel. If you go through all the people on the planet Earth and put their calls and their, their intent, the only place you're going to find those calling on Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, calling for the kingdom of heaven to be set up, is going to be found amongst the Israelites, the true biblical Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, okay? And also you Israelites that may look like heathen nations, Okay, but your spirit bears witness. All right, our seed has been scattered and spread so so far. All right, and that's that's how the Lord wanted it to be. It's a punishment. We're not all going to come looking alike, but we have one thing in common: is which we're we're drawn through the Holy Spirit to this Word. Okay, which is more than enough indicator that we're the Israelites. It says. So he's like, weigh the wickedness of the heathen and they got pedophile rings that do this, they do that. Weigh the, the wickedness in the balance and yeah, you, although you got a, a bunch of wicked jakes, it, it's the only where you're going to find those calling on Yahweh HaBashim Shai are amongst the true biblical Israelites calling for the kingdom. So Lord, you know, get these people out of the way and just establish that remnant. That's what we want. Or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in thy sight? Or what people have so kept thy commandments? The only people, it started with Adam. Okay? It says, and as the scriptures say in Psalms 147, the Lord showed this word unto Jacob and his statutes and judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any other nation. Okay? Verse 36, thou shalt find that Israel by name have kept thy precepts and not the heathen. And that's showing you all of these brothers and sisters who are into this word, into these precepts, and they may not look like what you consider to be an Israelite. Okay, the reason they know the precepts, the reason they're able to be drawn to the covenants is because they're Israelites. And what matters is the spirit inside of them above skin color. But we're all going to return to this royal dark <laughs> beautiful hue all of us we're going to return to that uh, uh dark uh brown all right to a golden hue golden light brown hue all of us we're going to get a new body we're going to be on a whole wing this 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 was only for us to get through okay uh uh, uh, uh our captivities and to get to the kingdom man this is done with when we get to the kingdom man so hopefully i'll edify that's the purpose of these videos, giving all praise to Yahweh, Bashim Yon Shai, Bashim and double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone. Peace and salutations unto the elect. Shalom.